Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing well on this day as we try to finish up the book of Daniel tonight, chapter 12. Um, appreciate you guys taking some time out of your evening to, to join us for, for this study and this fellowship. Uh, if you guys can see me okay, hear me okay, um, some unique way, your own way, let me know in the chat and maybe say hello to a few folks uh, while I do the same. Uh, we got our brother Eric E.R. Good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you. Bushcraft family says, what's up? Good to see you. So we've got Mr. Mike MQ says, happy Thursday all. Mike, hope you and Mary are doing well tonight. Uh, we got Miss Rose Young. Good to see you, Rose. Always a pleasure. We got our good friend Grace Johnston. Good to see you, Grace. Let's see. Yeah, this fella, I don't, I don't know much about that guy. Guess he can stay. Let's see, we got Miss Sue says, hey, all in blessings. It is good to see you, Sue. Uh, we're keeping you in our prayers, my friend. Let's see, who else we have? Let's see, I see Miss Norma Krause. Good to see you, Norma. Hope you're doing well tonight. She says, hello, everyone. Uh, Sue says thumbs up, everyone. That would be uh, very appreciated. Is it true? Is it the nut house? It's good to see you, my friend. Uh, I want to thank you for that shout out, brother. I appreciate that very much. That was uh, very humbling. Uh, Mr. Peanut did a video on his channel. Um, uh, very, very humbled by that. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you, my friend. And I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, Mr. TH2 can hear and see. I believe that's what he's referring to with ears and eyes. It is good to see you. Bushcraft says nice blue shirt. Yep. Yep. We all had blue shirts, right? Even Eric. Mm hmm. Uh, Lake File says you're very welcome. Uh, Okay, I'm, I don't want to butt into your conversation there. Let's see. Who else do we have? Oh, the eye drops. Oh, okay, the eye drops. Yeah, I got you. Remember that night during Bible study? Yeah. I did it. That's the same way I did the kids, and I still have to do yours. Minka, dear, it's good to see you. It says blessings at this holy time. Appreciate you being here today. Uh, you're super welcome, my pleasure. I appreciate that so much. Hey, we got Lori's world in here. We just watched one of Lori's videos. Her her garden. Uh, what would you call it? Garden tour. Her garden tour. Yeah, and very very good video. Her most recent one, but I read it fine. Yes. Uh, Cindy Squirrel, happy Monday Thursday. It's good to see you, Cindy. Hope you're doing well tonight. Appreciate you. And I think we're all caught up with that. Yeah, tonight we're going to try to we're going to try to finish up, uh, wrap up our study of the book of Daniel. We're in the last chapter, and it's actually a fairly short chapter. I think there's twelve or or thirteen verses. I believe thirteen or fourteen. It's not that long. I mean, we've done a lot longer, but uh, there's so much just packed in there. And you, when you when you read this chapter, chapter twelve of Daniel. Uh, it, it takes you places and it, it's hard not to, it's hard to just read Daniel 12 and stay in Daniel. Uh, it, it ties in so great uh, with the book of Revelation, um, ties in with the book of Zechariah quite a bit. Uh, so we're, we're going to go all over the place in the Bible tonight. Uh, book of Matthew, Matthew 24, um, read a little bit about Jesus and his Olivet Discourse. A lot, a lot to get through. So that's what we're going to dive into tonight. Appreciate you all. I'm going to put our text up on the screen, and then we're going to pray for Holy Spirit guidance for tonight. And we're going to get going because we got a lot to get through. So let's let's ask for uh, ask for the Lord's help. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together tonight with our brothers and sisters. And Lord, we ask for uh, your presence here with us tonight. Guide us and lead us through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Help us to uh, 
learn from this text. Help us to take your holy word and apply it to our lives. We ask that you lead us to all truths and understanding, and we'll give you all the glory. In the name, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so let's get going. Hey, Harvest Mary Moon, good to see you. So I'm just going to, I want to read through the, the whole chapter, and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll dig deeper into um, a whole lot. This is Daniel chapter 12, and you know the heading there, the time of the end, and that's what this is referring to, this whole chapter. It says, now at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people will arise, and there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. And at that time, your people, everyone who was found written in the book, will be rescued. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth, and knowledge will increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others were standing, one on this bank of the river and the other on that bank of the river. And one said to the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be until the end of these wonders? I heard the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river as he raised his right hand and his left towards heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. And as soon as they finish shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. As for me, I heard but could not understand. So I said, my Lord, what will be the outcome of these events? He said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time. Many will be purged, purified, and refined, but the wicked will act wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand, but those who have insight will understand. From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. How blessed is he who keeps wait, waiting and attains to the 1,335 days. But as for you, Go your way to the end, and you will enter into rest and rise again for your allotted portion at the end of the age. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. So this is speaking specifically to, to the end times. Uh, this The connection with Daniel 12 and the book of Revelation, it's like a hand in glove. It, it's uh, a, a powerful, powerful parallel. Uh, so we're going, we're going to come back. And I'll tell you what, in verse Daniel chapter 11 or chapter 12, verse 1, verse 1 has so much in it. There, there's a lot in verse 1 that we have to really dig into before we can, before we can move forward. Um, first of all, I want you to note Daniel 12, 1, it says, Now at that time, in that time, it's, it's referring to the period during, during the reign and rule of the Antichrist on the earth. We read all about that in Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11 was that uh, prophecy that, that started off describing the, 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 the life and the persecution of, of, of Antiochus Epiphanes, but then the prophecy morphed into something much greater. It, it, it switched and began describing the end times and how Antiochus Epiphanes was just, just a symbolic or a picture of something much more sinister, the Antichrist himself. So chapter 12 picks right up with that, right? It's, it, it's, it carries right over during that reign, the brutal rule and reign of the Antichrist on, on earth. It's, it's a time of brutal, brutal oppression and persecution. Specifically for the, for the majority, it is targeted towards the Jewish people. 
the people of Israel. And this persecution, it, it, is, it will be worse than any persecution that any nation has ever faced. Horrific. And then we read that, and there will be a time of distress such as never occurred since there was a nation until that time. This is the worst time that there will ever have been on the face of the earth. Horrific. Horrific. Okay, and I want to take a jump here to the book of Matthew because Jesus talks about this time. We go to Matthew 24, 21. This is, this is Jesus talking. This is what's known as the Olivet Discourse. He's talking to his disciples when they ask him that question. When will these things happen and what will be the signs of the end? So this is part of Jesus' answer. It says, for then there will be a great tribulation. That, that's where we get that name, great tribulation. The great tribulation is that three and a half year period. At the end, at the end of the age, that, that culminates with the return of Christ. For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. The worst period of time ever is yet to come. It says, unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. We know the specific amount of those days, 1,260 or three and a half years. And Jesus here, he talks about no life would have been saved. It's going to be a horrendous, horrendous amount of lost lives during this time period. Now, many of these lives that will be lost uh, will be direct persecution from the Antichrist himself or his armies. Um, Antichrist, also known as the beast, uh, he will be responsible for this. A, a lot of this persecution and a lot of this death will be at his hands. Devastating brutality of his reign. But, but if you study the book of Revelation, there's a lot more going on than, than just the reign of the Antichrist. If, if you look at Revelation if you go to Revelation 8, you start to see the judgments being passed out, starting with the trumpet judgments. Revelation 8.8 8 begins to point out some of this horrendous uh, loss of life that's going to be experienced. Uh, Revelation 8.8, 8, the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Revelation 8.11, the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters became wormwood. That's poisons, po poisonous waters. And many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. So we're, we're, you get a glimpse of this loss of life that will be happen, happening during this time period. Revelation 9, 6 says, And in those days men will seek death and will not find it. This is that time period when the, when the Bible describes these demonic locusts that, that come out and torment the people. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, and death flees from them. Horrific persecution. Uh, Revelation 9, uh, 13 to 16 says, Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released so that they would kill a third of mankind. Jesus wasn't exaggerating in Matthew 24 about the loss of life. It says the number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. All of this death, destruction, it, it's, it's almost to the point where you, you can't even begin to comprehend the, uh, the scope of, of all of this. It, it's, if we didn't have it in writing, it would be hard to even put it in, into our, put a mental image on this. 
devastating, the worst time ever to be on the face of the earth. Now, how is it that anyone, anyone could survive through this? Not only the, the reign of the Antichrist, brutal, horrific persecution at his hand, the trumpet judgments being poured out, the bowl judgments being poured out upon the earth. How is it that anyone who could, could survive this? Well, Daniel 10, 13, if we look back, it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding me for 21 days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left there with the kings of Persia. So here we have this messenger angel who was in spiritual warfare with, with, with a demon, this, this prince or king of Persia. And it was it was the archangel Michael who came to, to help him and, and to assist him. Uh, and that, that is, Michael is, if, if we go back, I'm going to flip my Bible to this real quick so I don't have to scroll up. If we go back to Daniel 12, 1, it says, Now at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands guard over the sons of your people, will arise. During this tribulation period, God will appoint or has already appointed Michael to be, to be a guardian. Now, God, God's word makes it clear that Michael has been assigned special protection over Israel. That's his job. And throughout Scripture, that's what Michael does. He, he is a protector uh, of Israel. And during this period of the Great Tribulation, he will be a, a key figure in, in keeping, you picture everything, all the death and destruction that's going on. Uh, Michael will play a big part in protecting the, the people of Israel. We look at Jude 9. It's another another uh, example of Michael uh, being a protector of Israel. It said, but Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, "The Lord rebuke you." Here we have Michael in a battle in a dispute with Satan himself. About they were arguing over the body of Moses. So Michael's going to be playing a, a large role in combating. Uh, the attacks of Satan uh, during this time period, Satan also being referred to as the dragon, against the people of Christ during the last days. Revelation 12, 7 through 9 is a great uh, description of this Michael arising and, and fighting for the people of Israel. It says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. So Michael and his, his angels overpower the dragon and his angels. Verse 9, And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. But that's a, a good a good example of Michael arising to be a defender of Israel. Now, this go, this next verse we're going to look at Revelation seventeen six. It, it to be to be a follower of Christ during this time period and and, and the tribulation, um, it will be horrific. Revelation 17, 6 says, And I saw the woman, that's referring to uh, Babylon, basically. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. That's a, that, that's a lot of martyrs. That's a lot of people martyred for the name of Jesus. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of of the witnesses of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered greatly. It's it's Michael who will be here on earth during this time period who will be combating uh, the attacks of, of Satan against the saints.
Now I want to go back to that first verse. Daniel 12, 1, it ends with this. It says, and at that time, your people, everyone who was found written in the book will be rescued. I, I really like how verse 1, yes, it points to a lot of death and destruction, but it also says, your people, everyone who is found written in the book will be rescued. It, verse 1 closes with a guarantee of preservation for the faithful. Everyone who is found written in the book. Now I want to look at this. What is this? What is this, the book? What's it mean to be written in the book? The book it's referring to is, is the Lamb's book of life. Okay, And we look at Exodus 32, 33. It says, the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. That's the book you want to be written in. You don't want to be blotted out of the book of life. Psalm 69, 28. May they be blotted out of the book of life, and may they not be recorded with the righteous. Malachi 3.16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and esteem his name. The book of remembrance. And we go again to the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 12 to 15. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So Daniel chap, Daniel 12, verse 1, talks about a rescue, a rescue. You know, that, that word can also be interpreted to, to slip away or to escape. Uh, I think it's important to point something out with that, though. This, this rescue, it doesn't necessarily mean they won't be martyred. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't lose their life during the tribulation period. You know, killed at the hand or the will of the beast, the Antichrist. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean they will not face a physical during the tribulation period. Their rescue is much greater than that. Much greater than that. They are delivered from the second death. And that's what this revelation, uh, this this chapter in Revelation is talking about 20, 12 through 15. This is the second death, the lake of fire. This is what they're being rescued from, the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The rescue is much greater than just having their, their physical bodies saved during this time period. This is, this is a rescue of e eternal scope. We move to the book of Luke and chapter 10, verse 20. Jesus says something very phenomenal. He says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. you know, they, they had just casted out demons and they were the, the disciples were celebrating. Do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. You're in the book of life. That should be your rejoicing. And, and this is the rescue that it's, that's, it's talking about. It's, it does not mean that many faithful people won't be slaughtered during the tribulation period. It's a greater rescue than that. It's a, it's a rescue with an e eternal scope. Revelation 21, 8, 
It says, but for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is what their rescue is from, ultimately, the second death, m much bigger than, than dying in the flesh here on earth. Our life here on earth is a moment, it's a vapor compared to eternity. This is what they're being rescued from, the second death. If we look at the book of John, chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. I think I missed a verse here. I'll just read it. I didn't I didn't put Daniel 12, 2 up on the screen. It says, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake. That's powerful. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake. These to everlasting life. This is, this is pointing to resurrection. But the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Everyone. Everyone will be resurrected, whether you were in Christ or whether you were not in Christ. Everyone will be resurrected. It says, many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. It's, it's pointing towards a resurrection. We all will face physical death at some point, but we, we have a promise, we have a promise of a resurrection. John 5, 28, 29 says, Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. Well, that, that doesn't say all the believers. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs, all the dead, will hear his voice and will come forth. Those who did the good deeds to a resurrection of life and those who committed the evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. There's That's the two options. A resurrection of life, faith in Christ, or a resurrection of judgment. Those are the unbelievers. But all will be res resurrected. So when, that, that, when Daniel 12, 2 says that many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt, that's what it's pointing to. Everyone, all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and, and will come forth, will be resurrected. Some to life, some to judgment. And you think about, oftentimes you think about that word resurrection. Think about that. That's our hope, right? To be resurrected. To be resurrected. But if you're an unbeliever and you're your part, you you also will be resurrected, even as an unbeliever. And for them, for an unbeliever, the resurrection is neither a deliverance or a blessing. Neither. And that's what John 5, 28, 29 is referring to. Just because there, there will be a resurrection of all, it doesn't mean that, that the non-believers will, will be delivered or there will be a blessing for them. It's quite the opposite. A resurrection of judgment. The unbelievers, for their resurrection, we look at Revelation 20, 11 through 15. It says, judgment at the throne of God. It said, then I saw a great white throne in him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds. Now, I want to stop there for a minute. How many times have you heard heard people speak of this? And maybe they, they say it this way. I can't wait until that day when... when I stand before that great white throne and be judged by God. 
don't think they understand the text. Mm -hmm. If if we are in Christ, our sins were judged at the cross, right? There, there's no judgment to face. If you're stand, if the, if you're at this judgment, the judgment of the throne of God, the great white throne judgment, you do not want to be there. You don't want to be there. The great white throne judgment, those who are in Christ will not face this. And when people say, I can't wait to stand before that great white throne, they, they don't they don't grasp what's happening here. You, you you don't want to face judgment because here's an, here's a really easy way to look at this. Your sins can be judged only in two places. So the only possibilities. The first place your sin can be judged is at the cross. Right? Your sin can be judged there and you can be done. You can be forgiven and you can be in him. You can be saved. Your sins can be judged at the cross or option B, I don't recommend. Your sins can be judged at the great white throne and ultimately in hell, lake of fire. Your sins are judged in two places, either at the cross or ultimately in hell. You do not want to be judged for your deeds. Look what this text says. It says, the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. We, we do not want to be judged for our deeds but because we've all fallen short. We've all sinned. We want our sins. You want your sins judged at the cross of Jesus Christ. That is the, that is the only place we have forgiveness. We don't want our, we don't do not want to be judged according to our deeds. And it says the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds. If you are judged according to your deeds, you face the second death. You face the second death. You want to you want to be judged at the cross. You want your sins judged at the cross. 14, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. If you're standing before the great white throne and you're judged according to your deeds, your name is not written in the book of life. Anyone standing in judgment for your deeds will, will be thrown into the lake of fire means you're outside of Christ. Oh, so many times I've heard this. I can't wait to can't wait for that day to stand before that great white throne. And it's like if, if you only knew, if you only knew. You, you need you need to you need to hope you need to hope and pray for that day that, that you come to the cross and you plead the blood of Jesus Christ and you have your sins judged right right then and there. Done. Jesus said it is finished. If 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 that is true, what Jesus said, which it is, it is finished. Then why am I still facing judgment? See the contradiction there. Okay, sorry for the little uh, little journey there. Yeah, and this 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 second death, this lake of fire, this isn't until you are destroyed this is eternal eternal you know we serve an eternal god you know psalm 92 says before the mountains were born or you gave birth to the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting you are god god has no beginning god has no end the lake of fire doesn't burn out it is eternal it is eternal Even Job and, and people who know me uh, know I struggle with the book of Job. Um, but even Job, 1926 says, Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God. That resurrection. And this is, this is pointing to that resurrection for the righteous. 
You know, Job, Job, Job is saying here, I, Job saw his resurrection. He saw that as his future. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God. Job knew he was going to be resurrected. Psalm 17, 15, as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. Again, David, he saw the resurrection. He knew that was his future. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake, when I come alive. Isaiah 26, 9 says it great. It says, your dead will live. Their corpses will rise. You who lie in the dust, awake and shout for joy. For your dew is as the dew of the dawn, and the earth will give birth to the departed spirits. We will be resurrected to be with him. If we are in Christ, we, we will be resurrected to be with him. It will be a deliverance. It will be a blessing. That's our, that is our hope. And, and, you know, coming up on this Sunday, this Easter Sunday, I, I, I don't even like to call it Easter Sunday. I call it Resurrection Sunday. The, the empty tomb is our hope because if, if he was resurrected, we can be resurrected to be with him, right? That's our hope. If Jesus was just crucified and buried and not resurrected, you know, that's not the gospel. The gospel is death, burial, resurrection. Our hope is that the tomb was empty. Our hope is that our Redeemer lives. Because he lives, we shall live. Your dead will live, their corpses will rise. You who lie in the dust, awake and shout for joy. Amen to that. Amen. That, that is good stuff. Daniel 12, 3 says, those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. This, these who have insight. This is referring to true believers. These are, this is referring to those who are in Christ. To those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And I'll tell you what, it's not because of our brightness. This brightness comes from the morning star. This, the, this brightness comes from Jesus Christ himself. This, this is the brightness that comes from, from none other than the Lamb. It is his brightness. Those who have insight will br shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. You see that? Those who lead the many to righteousness... When we when we lead people to Christ, that's what that's talking about. And, you know, the, the fruit of a Christ-centered godly life is winning new believers to the Lord. That's the Great Commission, right? We are to go out and make disciples. I love that. That is a powerful verse. Okay, I want to switch tabs here real quick. I didn't, couldn't put them all on one page, so. Switch up here. Okay, so we're going to pick up with Daniel 12, verse 4. It says, But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth, and knowledge will increase. First, it says, Conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Oftentimes in ancient times, important documents, they, they would be written in duplicate, like multiple copies. But the original, the original would be, would be protected and kept somewhere safe, mostly so it couldn't be tampered with. Not only to be destroyed, but it couldn't be tampered with. And, and even though copies could be made, the original was to remain secure. It would be sealed. It would be protected. Daniel was told to conceal these words, seal up the book. 
You've sealed up the scroll of these prophecies. Seal it up until the end times, until these prophecies will be fulfilled. You know, they weren't for Daniel's time. They were for the end of time. And, and I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, the more we see in the news, the, nor, the more we see, you, you can't look around this world today. You can't look at Israel. You can't look at the things going on uh, all around Israel. And you, you can't, I don't think you can rightfully say that we're not approaching closer and closer to those times. Uh, some people believe it's, it's, yeah, uh, Harvest Mary says time is nigh. Some people believe it's right at, right at the threshold. Uh, God told Daniel to seal these words, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. We're starting to see more and more of these prophecies come to fruition. That's, that should be telling us something. Should be telling us something. Now it also says many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. Now for a long time when I read this, and I've heard many say this, many going back and forth. And you think today about, um, I mean, we have jet planes, we have airplanes, we have transportation that can zip us back and forth. We can fly to Europe. We can fly to Africa. We can fly to Australia. It says many will go back and forth. And I thought for a long time, that's, that's what that was probably referring to, you know, toward the end times, many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. But I, I'm starting to get a little bit of a different viewpoint of this. Many will go back and forth this back and forth. When I think of that, I think someone just, just looking back and forth, searching. You, you picture this eager or intense search for, for what they're desiring, which is knowledge. Okay, Many will go back and forth. I, I picture an eager or intense search. And I want to show you a couple of examples. In the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 12, it says, People will stagger from sea to sea and from the north even to the east, and they will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. You, you see this eager or intense search. They're staggering from sea to sea, from north even to the east. What were they searching for? They, were, they would go to and fro, back and forth, to seek the word of the Lord. It says, but they will not find it. So when I when I read this now, seal up the book until the end of times, many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. I, I just picture this intense search for knowledge. You know, people see the prophecies starting to unfold and then they're hungry. They want to find more back and forth, you know, searching, scouring. That, that's what I picture there. Uh, if we look at uh, 2 Chronicles 16.9, we get another picture of this. It says, for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. You picture this, back and forth of the Lord, his eyes moving to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those who, whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. Again, a reference to this back and forth, to and fro. This time it's the eyes of the Lord moving back and forth. Zechariah 4.10, it says, For who has despised the day of small things? But, but these seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerub, Zerubbabel, uh, that he, he was part of the rebuilding of the uh, Jewish temple. They see the plumb line in his hand. He's, he's building. He's getting ready to build. These are the eyes of the Lord, which range to and fro throughout the earth. Again, we see this attention to detail, this back and forth, just a, an eager and, or intense search throughout the earth. And if you take that context and put it to, to this Daniel 12, 4, many will go back and forth. I, I picture a, a time of searching, a time of intense seeking for knowledge. And it says knowledge will increase as we see these prophecies unfold. 
you know, 1948, Israel came back, came back home to their land. We're, we see prophecies unfolding. Knowledge is increasing. These prophecies that Daniel was to conceal and seal up until the end of times, we're starting to, to get more knowledge because they're starting to unfold. Starting to unfold. I think many of God's people will eagerly seek. They will seek and search to understand how these prophecies are being fulfilled or how they will be fulfilled in the future. There's going to be a... a Intense search from believers and knowledge will increase. Now, here, here's another thought um, that I, I've heard on this back and forth. As far as biblical prophecies, and I, I thought this struck me as very fascinating. As far as biblical prophecies, how do we learn of these bib biblical prophecies? Like, how do we learn of the prophecies of Daniel? <laughs> Do, do we not read the book of Daniel? We read it, right? We, we read and we gain knowledge from it. Well, some believe this back and forth, this, this eager or intense search, this back and forth, to and fro. Some believe that back and forth could even be referring to someone's eyes moving back and forth as they're reading and studying these prophecies. Can't say that that's what it is. But it's just another thought that, that you'll hear on this. I think it's much bigger than just flying on airplanes back and forth. I think it's I think it's uh, more focused on learning of knowledge, the knowledge, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And this this eager, intense investigation, back and forth, searching to and fro, will lead to growth in understanding these prophecies. And I want you to think about today. You go all the way back from Daniel's time. It was told to Daniel to seal it up. Think about Daniel's time to today. Thanks to modern, even archaeological discoveries, our knowledge has increased of the past. We, we've found, uh, we've found discoveries where, where we've learned all kinds of things about ancient linguistics and things of the past. We've like found potteries that, that have proven the, the Babylonian kingdom and Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Belsh Belteshazzar. We, we've learned all of that. Knowledge is increasing. Knowledge is increasing. And I, I think it's, this is, this is, this was one of those times when it was a, a exponential jump. And a, a, a projection forward in the increase of knowledge when we have seen the return of the Jewish people to their ancestral home in 1948. You know, so much Bible prophecy points to this very thing happening, a restoral. They're coming, bringing a regathering back to, to, the, to the promised land. Knowledge has increased as prophecy unfolds before our eyes. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I want to scroll down a bit. Okay, so we pick back up Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. It says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others were standing, one on this bank of the river and one on that bank of the river. So, so you picture these angels, one on that side of the river and one on this side of the river. And one said to the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. So you have three parties here. An angel on that side of the river, this is the Tigris River, one on that side of the Tigris River, one on this bank of the Tigris River, and one dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river. There was one above the waters. And one of these angels said to the, to the one who was above the waters of the river, how long will it be until the end of these wonders? Now, I have to point it out because it's, it's very, uh, very common belief that the, the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, uh, it's a pretty, pretty uh, common belief that that is Jesus himself above the waters. 
um, can't we can't 100% discern that from the text, but that is a belief that these two angels, and you're going to see the two angels were were lacking some of the knowledge, so they were asking the one who was above the waters, like he had more authority, he had more information, because they ask him, how long will it be until the end of these wonders? You note know, the, the curiosity of, of the, the two angels in these coming events. They didn't know. They didn't know what was what was, what was happening here. It says, I heard the man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river as he raised his right hand and his left towards heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. And as soon as they finished, finished shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. So how long will it be until the end of these wonders? A time, times, and half a time. This, this time period, time, times, and half a time, is all through the Bible. It's all through Daniel. It's all through Revelation. The same time period is known as three and a half years. It's known as 1,260 days. It's known as 42 months. It is all exactly the same. You have a time, which is one year, times, which is two years, and half a time, which is half. So one plus two is three plus half is three and a half. Three and a half year period, that's the second half of that seven year period, the final seven years uh, of Daniel's prophecy in, in chapter nine. Jesus referred to this time period as the great tribulation, the great tribulation. So I want to back up and look look at these angels who are asking these questions for just a moment. Angels don't have all the knowledge. You know, angels are curious. They, they don't have all the answers. Uh, we have several examples of that. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long? Will you have no compassion for Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you have been indignant these 70 years? The Lord answered the angel who was speaking with me with gracious words, comforting words. So the angel didn't know. The angel was asking the Lord of hosts. The angel didn't have all of the answers. He's, he, he has to seek out the answers as well. Now, if you go to 1 Peter Chapter 1, verse 12, it says, It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you and these things, but now have been announced to you through those who preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. See, there, angels don't even have that knowledge. Things into which angels long to look. And, and I may offend someone here, but I, I think it's important. We don't pray to angels. Why, why would you pray to the lesser? Why would you not pray to the creator? You, you, you don't pray to someone who doesn't have the knowledge. You pray to the one who is the knowledge. King of kings, Lord of lords. You, you pray to God Almighty. Don't pray to angels. There's many examples in the Bible of uh, even Daniel, he, John in Revelation, he, he he goes to bow down and worship these angels, and they stop him. Don't worship. I'm a fellow servant like you. Don't pray to angels. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Michael's Michael's an archangel, and he's a fierce warrior, and he will defend Israel. Don't pray to Michael. Pray to the one who who sends Michael and gives Michael his orders. Pray, pray to the one who dispatches Michael. Yeah, Jesus Christ is our advocate. We we go straight to the we go straight to the Father, straight to the Father. But these this angel, he, he's asking, how long will this be? How long will this? He, it's describing this this time of persecution, this this antichrist reign on the earth, three and a half years. Time, times, and half a time. And, and the man dressed in linen, he had the answer. Time, times, half a time. This is uh, 
what was referred to in, in Daniel's chapter 9 prophecy, 927. It's a tremendous prophecy. It says, he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. That's seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years in, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. Right? It's, it's what that's pointing to. Half, it's, it's half of Daniel's 70 weeks prophecy that's right here on the screen. In this same time period, it's mentioned many times in Scripture. Time, times, half a time. Three and a half years. 42 months. 1,260 days. Book of Revelation, it's it's all, it's mentioned many times. And, and it says, also until the power of the holy people will be shattered. So the, the Jewish people will be battered and shattered under the reign of the Antichrist. And we get a really good picture of that in Zechariah 14, 2. And I'll be quite honest, this is this is hard to read. This is hard to read. This describes that shattering of, of Israel. This describes the, the brutal, barbaric conditions they will face during the Great Tribulation. Zechariah 14, 2. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city will be captured, the houses plundered, the women ravished, and half the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. That's harsh. That's harsh. Now, we got a little bit of a taste of this, just a tiny, tiny little blip sample of this uh, not too long ago. We watched terrorists come in to Israel, and it says, captured, plundered, women ravished. We're starting to see it. But in, in a point coming up, all those nations around Israel, all those nations surrounding Jerusalem, who, who want nothing more than Jerusalem to be gone. They want nothing more for than the Jewish people to be wiped off the face of the earth. They will come together. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city will be captured. So Jerusalem will fall. The house is plundered. The women ravished. And half the city exiled. But note, there's even in this darkest of dark scriptures, there's hope here. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. It speaks of a remnant. You know, we, we read about Michael protecting. There will be a remnant that's protected. The rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Jewish, The Jewish people, Israel, they will be overwhelmed by the brutal forces of the Antichrist. The beast and his armies, devastating. And it will appear that they are doomed to utter defeat. It will look like they're just about ready to be wiped off the face of the planet. Extinct, gone. With that mindset, you know, it was the angels asking these questions to the one who was above the waters, right? Daniel's watching this, and Daniel, he can't contain it anymore. He he bursts out and asks a question because he just he just heard about that, that the people would be shattered. Three and a half years, time, times, and half a time. He heard how bad it was going to be for his people. So Daniel, in verse 8, says, As for me, I heard but could not understand. So I said, My Lord, what will the outcome, what will be the outcome of these events? He wanted to know. What's going to happen to them? What's going to happen to my people? What's going to happen to Israel? Would they survive after their power has been shattered? Uh, would they be wiped completely out? What's going to happen? Daniel's it, it just bursting in him. He has to know uh, what's what's going on. As for me, I heard but could not understand. This just blows Daniel's mind. My Lord, what will be the outcome of these events? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Look at the answer he got. He said, go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up 
until the end time. Go your way, Daniel. I think a lot of us could take that advice and should take that advice when we wrap ourselves up so much and trying to figure out what's happening and when is this going to be fulfilled and Lord, when will be when will this when will what will be the outcome of these events and we cry out and we strive and are we putting that before going our way and presenting the gospel? Go your way, Daniel. And I'm talking to everybody listening right now. During this time of confusion, this time of seeing prophecy being unfold daily in our headlines, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Go your way. You take the gospel and be about his business. You know the great commission to go out into the world and make disciples for him. Go your way. Go your way, Daniel. Build up until the end time. You don't have all the answers, Daniel. You don't need all those answers. You go your way. It's the same thing that we need to be doing. Go our way. Present the gospel. That's what it's about. That, that is what is it about. Verse 10 says, many will be purged, purified, and refined. But the wicked will act wickedly. And none of the wicked will understand. But those who have insight will understand. Those who have insight, those who have the truth, those who have the knowledge. And we know that's in Jesus Christ. Many will be purged, purified, and refined. You want to see a purification? You want to see a refinement? Zechariah 12.10, these, these same Jewish people who, who had rejected their Messiah, crucified their Jesus, crucified our Jesus. Zechariah 12.10, it shows a refinement. It shows a purification. It shows them recognizing. It says, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So we're referring to the Jewish people, the spirit of grace and of supplication. So they will look on me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him. Who was pierced? They will look on me whom they have pierced. That is Jesus Christ himself. And they will mourn for him. So these inhabitants of Jerusalem... God will pour out a spirit of grace and supplication, and they will recognize their Messiah. And they will mourn for him. They will realize as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping of a first over a firstborn. Israel recognized their Messiah, will recognize their Messiah. Purified through the testing, purified through the fiery trial of the tribulation. They will cry out. They will recognize their Messiah. If we back up just a moment, it says many will be purged, purified, and refined. That's what that's referring to. It says, but the wicked will act wickedly. There's a whole lot of people that think this world is just going to get better and better and better and better. And ultimately, it's going to be refined until it's good enough for the Lord to come back. That's not what the Bible says. The wicked will act wickedly. You want a better, better understanding of that? 2 Timothy 3.13. But evil men and imposters will proceed from bad to worse. It's going to get worse, folks. Deceiving and being deceived. It's going to get worse. The wicked will act wickedly. And those who are wise, those who have this insight, the truth, this revelation of Jesus Christ, if we, if we have that insight in the scriptures, we will comprehend what's going on during those times. Without that insight, without that truth, with that, without that knowledge, you'd be lost. You'd be lost. But the wicked, they won't understand what's going on. They'll be like sheep without a shepherd. They'll be, they'll be lost. So God, we had a we have we have a good shepherd. Okay. 
So we move to Daniel 12, verses 11 and 12. It says, From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. How blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335 days. Now, if we back up to verse 7, it mentions the time, times, half a time, three and a half year period. That's 1,260 days. This, this verse refers to 1,290 days. Now, let's look at what this says and let's put this in context. From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up. When you, see the, when you see the abomination of desolation set up, timer starts. 1,290 1, days later, that will, be, that will be the fulfillment. Now, if we look back, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 15 to 22, Jesus speaks to this. It says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, Standing in the holy place. That is the abomination of desolation. When the Antichrist puts himself in the temple and declares himself to be God. That's the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet. It says, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. This is the start. This is the start of that three and a half year period. The worst period of time on the face of the earth. If you were in Judea, flee. It says, whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things that are out of his house. Get out. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. Flee. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. It's just going to add difficulties to this fleeing, to this escape. This escape. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter. Or on a Sabbath, even more struggles in this, this fleeing away from, from this Antichrist. It says, for then there will be a great tribulation, such has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. This is, this is one of those texts that we see Jesus speaking about the abomination. It says, therefore, when you see it. He's speaking of it in a future tense. The abomination of desolation, that's pointing to that time when the Antichrist is, is reigning and declares himself to be God. And, and a lot of this thing is, a lot of this scripture is, it's in the prophecies contingent on some things to happen. You know, a lot of people argue about whether or not there has to be a rebuilt Jewish temple. Listen. Christians, we we don't need a temple to worship in. We've never needed a temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? We don't need a temple. Jesus, it, we don't have to sacrifice. Jesus is the sacrifice. Everything that the temple entailed with, with the worship, the sacrifice, all of it, the structure of the building, all of it pointed to Jesus Christ. We have the, the fulfillment of all of that. We have Jesus Christ himself. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. Our faith is in him. We don't need a temple. But for this prophecy to be fulfilled, you, you pretty much need a temple. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, even the Apostle Paul in the book of Thessalonians talks about this taking his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. I agree a thousand percent. We as Christians, we as followers of Christ, we have no need for a temple. But the fulfillment of the prophecies, it, it sure seems to me there needs to be a temple for, for, for these to be fulfilled. It says, unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So, so we know when you see the abomination of desolation, three and a half year time period, timer starts. And you, and you know 
1,260 days will be the return of Christ. That's what the prophecy says. Revelation 24. Well, let's back up just a moment. We have this time period. Now, three and a half years is 1,260 days. This prophecy in Daniel says 1,290 days. This is 30 days past. And if you go, it says, how blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335 days. That's an additional 45 days. Uh, I, I've heard a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot of conjecture about what is the what what is the meaning behind these extended time periods. You know, per, perhaps it, it's it's for repairing the devastation of the tribulation, right? I mean, the, everything's going to be destroyed. Perhaps it's it's from burying bodies from the Battle of Armageddon. They're going to be everywhere. Ezekiel speaks to that. You know, it's it's months worth of burying people. Either way, either way, it says, how blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335 days. And this is pointing to the millennial kingdom. Now, I do have to say, our brother Bill Bailey, uh, I don't know if he's here tonight, but Bill Bailey wrote, wrote a book called Millennium Reign, and I've heard really good things about it. I know I know. Uh, my brother Bubba News has a copy of it. Uh, he he highly recommends it. So uh, if you're interested, you might want to check that out. But Revelation 20, verse 4 says, Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Christ returns, beats the Antichrist, false prophet. Satan is bound for a thousand years. That begins the millennial kingdom. Christ reigning and ruling here on earth for a thousand years. Oh, what a day. Oh, what a day. In that day, well, think about that for a moment. Isaiah 11, 9 says, They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as waters covers the sea. Can you imagine a time period like that? The earth full of the knowledge of the Lord. What a, what a great day. What a great period of time whole earth full of the knowledge of the Lord. Now, I couldn't stop without at least, <laughs> remember Daniel, answer, Daniel asked a question, what's going to happen to my people? What's going to happen? You know, he, he got all of this, this message about the shattering of his people and time, times, and half a time, and how bad it's going to be. And Daniel piped up. He couldn't take it anymore. What will be the outcome of these things? What's going to happen? Well, knowledge has increased since Daniel's time. And, and we have more revelation. And we know what's going to happen. Literally, revelation. If you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 11 to 21, and I absolutely love this text. It's the coming of Christ. That moment when it looked like Israel was about to be annihilated, extinct. Their Lord and Savior shows up, King of kings and Lord of lords. And it says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it, is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. 
And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty, and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which fly in mid-heaven, Come, assemble for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of commanders and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves and small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Stage is set. Christ has returned. The Antichrist, the beast, gathers his army. And you're, 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 you're expecting some massive collision and struggle. There is no struggle when you fight against the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We go from the stage being set in verse 19 to the conclusion in verse 20. It says, And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. No contest. No contest. That was the answer that Daniel didn't get at that time. Knowledge has increased, right? That's an example of it. All right, so my wife handed me a note with some prayer requests on it and yeah that i will try to decipher and she also says on a note congrats for 1k with a smiley face and a heart so apparently apparently we hit 1000 subscribers uh give me one second mr bill bailey i'll i'll give you a uh i will give you a wrench and then you can do uh, what you will there. One second. Okay. There, you should have one now, Bill. So you can drop that. Yeah, Bill, uh, he wrote a book called Millennium Rain. And uh, I'm sure he's got it linked on his channel. Uh, highly recommend Bill's channel. Highly recommend Bubba News's channel. Um, I recommend the Nut House's channel, and I want to thank him again for that push. And Mr. Charles, aka Bushcraft Family, I want to thank all you guys. Um, listen, it's not about numbers. <laughs> numbers, numbers really truly mean nothing in the grand scope. Um, but it that. It means a lot that um, it means a lot that you guys would do that for me. I mean, Peanut literally made a video for me, and we were sitting in the the sitting in the other room the other night, and we watched that video, and it's like hard to even not get a tear brought up. It's just uh, to have people care for you that much, and have people uh, you know let you know that. Uh, that you're appreciated. That it's everyone who shared you out on the community page. Alone. Yeah, I mean that it's 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 everybody. Like Lake said, it's everybody who's been sharing out the channel on their community tabs. Um, I see a lot of that. People will share and encourage and ask people to come over and check it out. Um, yeah, and you know all the time that we put in together. With even iron sharpening iron, like I study with Bubba a lot and Brother Ross, 
the iron sharpens iron and we it's all about being there for one another uh standing united in in one accord in our lord and savior jesus christ and and we're going to have differences don't get me wrong we're going to have differences when it comes to some people baptize babies some people don't you know some people you know, I don't really want to go too far down that path, but you guys know the differences I'm talking about, the denominational differences. We can fellowship through that. The one thing that we got to have is Jesus Christ. We At the foot of the cross, we are all on level ground, and we are all in need of, of a Savior. And as, lo as long as... as we are in one accord in Jesus Christ, and he is our Lord. He is our Savior. He died for our sins. He was buried and resurrected. He is our hope. I'll fellowship with you all day long. All day long. Um, okay, I want to uh, list off some prayer requests. Um, Those are just some of them I got during okay. the Okay, so the second dawn. Uh, some people know him as 101. He's not he's, alive. He's, he's, he's not going to go alive tonight. He's not feeling well. So if you guys could keep him in your prayers. Uh, keep our good friend Sue in your prayers for healing. Uh, Sue's been dealing with quite a bit. Uh, prayers for uh, Bushcraft family. Prayers for all to be focused on Jesus. Uh not the other distractions this week. That's a prayer request from Bushcraft family. Correct. Stay away from the distractions. Uh, and we had a prayer request for a remote viewer who had finished his chemotherapy Friday, but is in the hospital oh. tonight with a lot of pain. Okay, so remote viewer um, finished chemo Friday. Uh, he's still in the hospital? From Canada. No, he went to the hospital today. Oh, he's in the hospital today. So we'll pray for him out. Um, Carson and Marlene say better, but illness still hanging on. And and Lake also says, all who need healing from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. So let's take a minute and we'll um, let's pray for our friends, right? Let's let's pray for our friends. We have a God who is beyond anything we could ever imagine. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too small. And he, our God, who created the heavens and the earth and as an afterthought almost breathed the stars that we can't even count. He breathed them into existence. Eric's having a uh, late request his father's dementia. Okay, ER's father's dementia. Okay. So let's, let's go to our God, that God. And let, let's let's go to him in prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this privilege of coming together in fellowship tonight with our brothers and sisters. And uh, we thank you for your holy word and in leading us through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to, to understand more. Uh, we thank you for the revelation for tonight. And Lord, along with the... Uh, the study and along with the praise and along with the worship that we've lifted up tonight. Uh, we also have many needs. We have many brothers and sisters who are going through a tough time right now. So, so Lord, first we want to lift up our friend, the second Don. Uh, he's not feeling well tonight. So we ask that you be with our brother. Uh, we ask that you uh, help him to feel better. We pray for healing and strength for him. Uh, Lord, we lift up our good friend, Miss Sue. Uh, Lord, you see the medical procedures that she's going through and has ahead of her. So, Lord, we pray for, for healing for our good friend, Sue. Give her strength. Um, Lord, give her peace. You, you see the struggle that's that she's been facing. So give her the, the peace of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Just be with our friend, Sue. Uh, Lord, our brother Bushcraft lifted up. Um, prayers for that we all stay focused on Jesus and not on all the other distractions that we're seeing uh, everywhere. This world tries to get our focus off of you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you keep us focused through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Keep us focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. Uh, Lord, we want to lift up our brother remote viewer. Uh, Lord, you see uh, he's been through that chemotherapy. 
So, Lord, we, we pray for strength for, for our brother. Uh, we pray for healing. Um, Lord, we ask that if any of that anxiety that he's going through from this, take that away, bring him peace through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you for being there for a remote. Uh, Lord, we lift up our good friends Carson and Marlene. Ask for continued healing for them. Uh, they've been battling this sickness for, for a while now, Lord, so uh, help them to get back on their feet and get them back to full strength. Uh, Lord, we lift up our, our brother Eric E.R. and his dad, who's uh, in a battle right now with dementia. Uh, Lord, we know that's so hard. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for... Uh, we pray for guidance. We pray for strength for Eric during this time period. Uh, Lord, I know personally how hard that is. And, and Lord, we just lift up our brother Eric, give him strength, and be with his dad. We pray for healing and clarity for his dad. Just have your hand upon their whole family, Lord. And, Lord, uh, my wife lifted up this prayer request that all who need healing uh, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. And I'll add whether that healing be physical healing. Uh, Lord, heal those wounds. Uh, take away that pain. Or whether it's spiritual healing, Lord. Uh, Lord, bring peace and give guidance and clarity. Or whether it be material healing, Lord. Lord, we're not ashamed to, to come to you with our material needs as well. So, so we lift those up, and we ask that you search out all of our hearts for any needs that were left unspoken tonight. Uh, sometimes these needs, they, they seem like mountains before us that are insurmountable or unconquerable, but nothing's too big for you, Lord. And we, we take all of them, and we place them in your hands and ask, ask for your presence and your touch and Lord, in closing, we want to thank you for not giving us what we deserve, but instead you've given us mercy and you've given us grace through your son, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. And we pray all these things in his mighty name, the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, fellowship tonight. I do have a question for you guys. TJ was in here? Wow. Um, I do have a question for you guys. Um, we just finished the book of Daniel. Um, I, I I had plans of just moving right into the book of Hosea. Uh, Hosea is 14 chapters. We could probably go through it fairly quick. You guys be interested in Hosea or uh, anything else that's jumping out at you guys? Yeah, I guess I could put a community tab post up there. Yeah, we, we could do something like that. Uh, hey, Bonnie, good to see you. Pat, good to see you. Dana, good to see you. Equine, Lively Prepper. All right, so sounds like uh, Jose should be good. Yeah, a lot of times when you get into the, the minor prophets, the uh, like we just read Daniel, and now when you go to Hosea, you go back in time a bit. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just plan next Thursday on starting the book of Hosea, and and we'll see where the Lord takes us with that one. So, uh, love all you guys. Hope you guys have have a blessed uh, week coming up. Um, don't forget. I don't know how we would forget, but this is. Uh, Resurrection Sunday week, um, Sunday morning. Um, don't forget, 10.30 a.m., Joyful Noise and Notes. <laughs> be charming as long as you don't have to measure. <laughs> be charming, Sarah. She's going to be Be charming. Uh, really liked the temple dimensions in Ezekiel. <laughs> 50 cubits by, what do you have? I have cake. That's not cake. Caramel rice cake with cream cheese. That doesn't yes. count. Yes, it does. That doesn't count. It's a rice cake. It's a caramel cream. That doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count. It's cake. No. Rice cake. Uh, Sunday morning, 1030 a.m., Joyful Noise and Notes, if someone could drop their link. Um, live praise and worship music every Sunday morning at 1030, and that carries right over to our our 
stream at 11:05, um, where we'll have it. We'll have a resurrection message this Sunday uh, instead of our Roman study. So, hope to see you guys there. Uh, we love all you guys. Um, reach out if you got any prayer requests. <laughs> have a blessed week and God bless everybody.